Ten Segron have been ordered, read at gunpoint, to produce another report on human cultural strategic aptitudes. Command was not yet satisfied, so if his, this enclosed report, was not to Command's liking, his next mission may be one he is not meant to return from. Tensegrom was doing his species equivalent of sweating, panting, as they did not possess dermal sweat cooling. He was on Terran Hour 19 of reviewing these video games, a tradition of computer simulations dating back to their second millennium of their calendar. The feats of manipulation, strategy, and pure, unmitigated, uncensored slaughter has his entire psychology in a panic. Tensegron took a few moments to step away from his computer, making a cup of what Terrence would call tea, a melange of herbs steeped in very hot water. In his case, a calming mix of herbs from his homeworld, designed for patience and reduced heart rate. Focus. He needed focus. Unlike his previous reports, this one would be filmed for judgement by command, to see if Tensegron was unduly exaggerating his findings. For my report, I will divide these Terran video games into four categories, from least concerning to most. He took a soothing sip of his tea, and stilled himself alongside the fortified balm. He looked back to the camera. The first category we will begin with, the ARPG, or Action Role Playing Game. Your typical ARPG has the player, in this case a Terran, face off against regularly insurmountable odds as they control a single warrior against hundreds of times their number in enemies. Their character will inevitably fail, yes, but even from a weakened initial state they will acquire additional physical skill in the attempt, as well as rewards for their perseverance. This is not unlike our recruitment on Zephyr Prime for our Greenblooded. Survive your training, you graduate to knife and pistol. Survive your first deployment, you earn your rifle and armour. Be granted veterancy, you may have your own command vehicle. But this is not a military blood sport, this is a simulation for entertainment. These humans accidentally know our promotion system. Ergo, how to use it against us. Taking a moment to have some more tea, Tensegrin returned to his video. These players do not all suffer again and again for their promotions. The Terran video games often have what are called hacks and cheat codes, whereby unblooded players may skip the line of experience and acquire the arms of a greater compatriot. Worse yet, often these promotions are commonly purchased with currency, read pay to win. Yet when competitive comparisons can be made, most veterans may have beaten every challenge on their own merits, a dozen times over. There are ARPGs of sword and shield combat. There are those of aerial dogfights. There are those of pure magical fantasy. The masters of this genre have reflexes to rival our best interceptor pilots. Cue footage. A 20 minute montage of dodge rolling in Dark Souls. Next, is a genre that I will acknowledge is the turned-based tactical RPG. These involve the player commanding a squad of individuals, of usually different ranks and talents, set upon by an enemy of equal or traditionally greater numbers. Often tasked with a specific goal in an environment of hostiles. The number of games in this genre exceed description. Whilst the ARPG requires the reflex and attentiveness of a pilot, the turn-based tactical RPG takes off where ARPG is left off. You have a handful of specialists. You must make masterful use of each man's talents, or you fail the objective at best, or you all die at worst. Any offshoot of the human rules framework of Dungeons & Dragons is a prime example. There are roles that are obvious to us. Champion, shield bearer, scout, healer. But then there are easily 14 flavours of mystics, for lack of a better term. Each represented a yet unknown technological capability, and so every player knew the way to best counter them, with the scarcest weapons and armour. 
Devised in the second millennium of Terran years, they have predicted all sorts of abilities, from ECM warfare to hyperspace interdiction, to concerted energy weapons, all represented by these ancient mystic classes. Before they had even colonised their first extraterrestrial body, humans had already mastered anti-energy weapons tactics. Anti-gravitics tactics, anti-plasma tactics, we still hear human soldiers today boast they passed their reflex save when boasting about surviving a plasma barrage. Next, and second most worrying, grand strategy. Let's not mince words. Any Terran who is adept at these games is at least as capable in logistics as our lowliest quartermaster general. These games sprawl continents, worlds, and frequently galaxies. Stellaris now on its 70th release, now in the non-fiction section of the market, historical human errors from Imperator Rome 50 to the Victorian Age, Victoria 70, to their first and second and third world wars, Heart of Iron 56. These games, or as Stellaris players call practice, generally are a holistic empire simulator Industries must be adjusted, manpower rearranged, resources exploited, bought or stolen, all to the end of supporting an empire. An empire that need men, material, and sometimes cannot be too precious about where it comes from. Political and social strife that can be depicted down to just that one janitor who's about to rebel. And the player can make the decision. Do I make that janitor's life better by raising minimum wages? Or do I think the state has the resources to crush his inevitable proletarian rebellion? You have the choice to disappear his faction ruthlessly, should you so choose. In wartime, how much labour am I willing to force my POWs to do before my populace realises I have abandoned the virtues we started the war with? Tensegron posts five screenshots from Hearts of Iron deployment screens. Political screen, unit recruitment and resource. These players have largely already solved the minute of running an expansive wartime empire in digital form. Woe betide us who goad these humans into actually having one. Finally, real-time strategy. If ARPGs are to a truly skilled soldier, as tactical RPGs are to a sergeant, and grand strategy to a commander-in-chief. Where the hell does real-time strategy land in the command structure? Tensegrum plays 20 minutes of competitive StarCraft. RTS master players average 400 actions per minute. They may command up to several hundred units at a time. Just in the StarCraft 71 championships in the Soul system, the victor cloaked in at... 600 APM at his peak. No longer a game with the science fiction genre, as humans have power armor, have met psychically attuned races, as well as hive mind swarms, these players are essentially experts at battalion level command. They are masters of economy and attrition. They know exactly how many marines they can sacrifice to an objective and still reap a net profit. How many tanks, how many aircraft. They're not even doing the math anymore, they are literally able to intuit the cost-benefit before contact is made. These wizards are able to see shim military value in a half second, and know when to engage, when to retreat, and how to preserve the whole battalion, even if every man in it knew they were dead. We know there are devouring swarms in the black. We know the more psychically attuned races can manifest otherworldly abilities. Starcraft uses these as their primary opponents. That experience is not nothing. But these masters can issue four to six hundred commands per minute. Give them enough live intel, and these battalions would run absolute circles around any command structure this galaxy has ever seen. I have seen human gaming, and I'm scared. Tensegron shakily having another sip of his tea.